Greetings and welcome to Worship Edge Hill. This is the seventh and last Sunday in the season of Eastertide, and it's also the last Sunday we'll be doing virtual worship. And I thought since this was the last Sunday of doing this, this format, in this format, that I would go ahead and do it back here on my deck overlooking the river because I won't be able to do it this way again. At least we hope not. Also, Monday evening, we have our next church council meeting. Um, we are going to go ahead and try to do that as an in-person meeting to discuss our protocols for worshiping together in person the following Sunday. So if you're on church council, I want to encourage you to come. We'll be safely distanced and you're welcome to wear masks. And we will be discussing um, really how we're going to restart. It's an important time for the for this congregation at Chill United Methodist Church. Um, I invite you to quiet your hearts and minds and let's worship together. From the wanderings of our lives we gather. We bring real life with us to this time and place. Let us come here, offering our lives before God. The presence of God will go before us and remain with us in our play and in our work. 
in our resting and our service. Would you pray with me now? Great and loving God, we who come to worship are also persons who sometimes feel that you have abandoned us or left, left us to fend for ourselves. Although we rely upon your ever presence, we suspect your absence. Forgive us and encourage us, O oh God, when we doubt your promise will be with us always. Grant us the gifts of discernment and hope. Enable us to recognize your workings in the commonplace and in the everyday. Open us to faith and help us to perceive not only what is, but also what, by your grace, might be. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace of God be with you. Receive God's forgiveness and the promise of the Spirit. Recognize the gift of hope within you, for Jesus is risen from the dead. Seen or unseen, he is present in our midst, and we see the hope of God's love reflected in each other's faces.
loving God, as your people, the people of Edge Hill, we worship you one last time, separated by the distances between our homes, but yet connected to one another in your love. We recognize that Christ has no body now on earth but ours, no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes which the compassion of Christ is to look out on a hurting world. Ours are the feet with which your work will be done. Ours are the hands with which your grace will travel. As we regather next week in person in our sacred space, we ask that you anoint us for a new journey, a sacred journey of love and service to our community and to your world. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for today on this, the seventh Sunday of Eastertide, is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. And as you hear this reading today, I want to invite yourself to hear these words as if you're in the place of the disciples, as Jesus looks to heaven and begins to pray for them. If you're anything like me, I think it might dramatically change the way you hear this reading. Because everything that Jesus says and teaches the disciples, Jesus is saying and teaching us. So I invite you to hear these words.
After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, The hour has come. Honor me so I may honor you, since you've given me love for all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given me. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the true God, and Jesus the Christ whom you have sent. I honored you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, honor me in your own presence, with the honor that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on your behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been honored in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy God, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the true God, and Jesus the Christ, whom you have sent. I really like this straightforward description of eternal life. Eternal life comes through our relationship with the eternal God. It's not complicated. It's not always easy, but it's not complicated. So on this last Sunday in Easter, in the season of the resurrection, this is an idea about eternal life that really should jump out and mean something to us beyond the ancient empty tomb and the flowery cross that we usually have outside in front of the church during Easter. This understanding of eternal life speaks directly to us within the messiness and ambiguity of the world today. Eternal life is as simple as knowing and sharing the love of God in this lifetime. It's an understanding that can ease the anxiety in our lives and provide us the power that we need to experience true peace in this messy life. True peace because we're recognizing the love of God at the foundation of everything we do. In the big picture, today's reading is a prayer. And Jesus is praying for his disciples. And it's important to note that in the Gospel of John, Jesus' prayer before his arrest, is not off alone as the disciples were struggling to stay awake like they are in the synoptic Gospels. Today's reading has Jesus sitting around a table. Sounds familiar? Following a meal, and they're engaging in a time of extended conversation. For us, following a year of isolation in this pandemic, I miss those long post-dinner conversations. Don't you miss those meaningful times of fellowship that just flow so easily after you've connected with others over a great meal? Those type of conversations and connections are sacred. No, they're sacramental. Sacraments being an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual gift. Toward the end of their warm after-dinner dialogue, Jesus looks to heaven and begins to pray. And as he spoke, I imagine that the disciples were hanging on every single word he said. For me, it brought back a couple of distinct memories of times in my life when a person or people whom I respected and looked up to prayed specifically for me. It can be both empowering and extremely humbling to have someone pray for you while you're there in their presence. One example that I'll always remember is when I met with my district superintendent at that time, Harriet Bryant. 
and we were talking. Really, we were talking about me coming to Edge Hill United Methodist Church. I was just coming out of a divorce that was pretty peaceful, but it was difficult, and I was struggling more than I realized. And we ended our meeting together with her asking me if I minded if she said a prayer for me. You know, what am I supposed to say? No, I'd rather you not pray. No, I, of course, I said, of course you can pray. So she proceeded to pray to God using very caring and compassionate words that were clearly um, lifting up the things that I longed for during this difficult time. And before she had finished, I couldn't help but have tears in my eyes and on my cheeks because it was such a powerfully authentic and emotional experience for me. In that moment, I truly felt God's love and felt as if I was being cared for. And I imagine this is similar to what the disciples were feeling in today's story. Loved and cared for, that is, in Jesus' prayer. So the disciples in John's gospel never ask Jesus, teach us how to pray, followed by the Lord's Prayer that we all know. In John's gospel, this reading is probably considered the Lord's Prayer according to the gospel of John. But how would it affect us? How would it affect our thoughts about God and others if we approached prayer in our spiritual lives the way Jesus does in this reading. Of course, a life of prayer can and does change what it means for us to know God. And to know God in the fourth gospel is synonymous with being in a relationship with God. Not necessarily a life of praying for ourselves, but a life praying for others as well. It's moving outside of ourselves as channels of God's love to the most vulnerable around us. And this is important because the entirety of John's gospel paints a beautiful picture of God's incarnation in Jesus the Christ and for us as the body of Christ. As humans, it paints a picture of what being in relationship with God looks like. Because of this incarnational relationship, we simply continue the work that Jesus started in expanding the circle of God's love to include every living thing on the planet, including the planet. So on this, the seventh and last day of Easter, just a week before Pentecost, Jesus' prayerful words to God about his followers are perfect. How do these sound? Jesus says, I now am no longer in the world but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one. Let's let Jesus' blessing here give us a theme for the season of Pentecost. Pentecost. It says, protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one. It is perhaps one of the most relevant and truthful definitions of what Pentecost is supposed to be for all followers of Christ. Jesus is no longer in the world. Jesus, now resurrected, has returned to God. But we are still in this world. And God's work is now in our hands. And God is counting on us to be that same loving presence in the world. We are in the world now. This is when we can make a difference. The world that God loves and the world we were created to love and care for. It leads me to our concern and love for the children in the Edge Hill neighborhood. The work that this congregation has done since the 1966 has been the embodiment of divine love and divine love toward the most vulnerable. Children growing up in concentrated poverty are the true victims of some of our systemic, many of our systemic problems in this world, in this country. We will continue and are now looking for ways to bring more people into the life and work of our neighborhood ministry efforts. That's going to happen 
And it will happen in ways that allows our neighbors to lift themselves up and care for each other every bit as much as we have. This post-pandemic era is a time of rebirth for Edge Hill United Methodist Church. Because for us to navigate into the future and to a place of sustainability, I'm going to recommend that we look to the future as if we're doing a new church start. We have a few years to expand this body of Christ to become sustainable by bringing in new members of the body of Christ, willing to open their hearts and their minds to the Holy Spirit to do God's work in this neighborhood. But we must adjust in the ways that we welcome people into our worshiping community, how our worship community looks, in how we work together to expand the incarnate love of God through this congregation. Our future is gonna include some powerful and transformational neighborhood ministries. I mean, we have a 50 year history of working with elementary, middle and high school students. This history includes music, academics, social and emotional learning, and simply safe play and fellowship. I think at the top of the list of what we're going to be focusing on is going to be Edge Hill Early Learning, our early childhood education program, because that is the one missing link of this 50 years of ministry, working with the most vulnerable families, providing tutoring after school, summer camps for expanding their experiences. All of this has been beautiful and wonderful and life-changing for many but the majority, by the time we get them, are already so far behind in the education process, most of them are never going to catch up. What Nancy and I have seen in just the few years this one or two day a week Edge Hill Early Learning is happening is a blossoming in these kids ages six months to four or five years. It's been remarkable. It's the basic concepts of how a brain is formed and wiring is created in those early formational years. So that will be an area we're focusing on and investing because that's going to connect the transformational work that comes later in ways that makes it so much more effective. But we must also work to make our sanctuary in our church building more welcoming to all of our neighbors. So many of our neighbors love the work of Edge Hill United Methodist Church. They're progressive thinkers, but we have to be able to welcome them where they are and find places for them to serve and to lead. That's gonna take some shifts, some changes, some priorities that are shifted around, but we can get there and we need each and every one of you to be part of that work. And I invite you to open your hearts and minds to what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do. So next week, Pentecost 2021, we feel God's presence calling us to do things we could never imagine on our own. Thanks be to God. Amen. of when I began attending Edge Hill. I was able to leave behind all of the spiritual baggage that had weighed me down for most of my life. And being a part of Edge Hill is liberation in its most joyful sense. I know from hearing some of your stories that being a part of Edge Hill has been the joyful liberation that your heart and your spirit needed to. So now, during this portion of our service, we take a moment to give back to the church body that gives so much to us on a weekly basis. Instructions on how to complete the digital offering will follow this video. So thank you, Edge Hill, for being a part of my joyful liberation.
I invite you to hear this benediction. Go forth in the world. Come back together next Sunday at Pentecost. Let's receive the Holy Spirit in our lives and start this new era, this new journey as Edge Hill United Methodist Church. Amen.